Welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about steganography. This is the art of hiding information in another file that you can pass in plain sight. There are many ways to do this. I'm going to review some tools that actually embed the file inside another file rather than doing any kind of visual steganography where we alter the pixels inside the picture itself. Now, I've downloaded all these tools off the internet. I'm going to leave it up to you as to your comfort with downloading and executing these programs. But I just want to show you what's possible with some of the tools that are available and how one might go about using them. So I've got a secret message that I want to send to a friend. Let's show you what that looks like. Cat secret dot text. So here's my secret that I want to send to a friend. I've got a picture file here that I'm going to open. And it comes in at uh, 32.5. K. I'm going to embed the secret text file inside the Cryptos 1 JPEG file. I'm going to do this using a, something called Stag Hide. Oops. Stag Hide. S T E G. So when I type in the command, it shows me all the variations of flags that I can put on here. And at the very bottom, most importantly, it shows me all the syntax to embed a file. So I'm going to use stag hide, and then this is cover file, which is the thing that people will actually see. So it'll be cryptos. And then here's my embedded file, EF, which will be secret.txt. Okay, I'm going to add a passphrase. We're going to call that hidden, H-I-D-D-E-N. Type it again, and now we've embedded it and it's done. So now let's say we get the file and we don't know what the password is to start with. So what would we do to figure out what's in there? So a lot of people would start by just asking the system to tell me, is the file extension valid for the file that I'm seeing or is it some other kind of file type? So file on cryptos. Shows that it is in fact a JPEG. Next, I'm going to do a command called strings. So a lot of times you wind up with some kind of text in the hex. So we can do a hex dump, and I'll show you what that looks like. Hello. Okay. And you wind up with a bunch of non-printable characters, which are what all the question marks are. And I don't see any patterns here at the end of the file and I'm not going to go through all the rest of it. There's an easier way to go about it. There's a command called strings and that'll go through the hex and show me what printable text strings appear and I'm going to tell it to look through all the file and I'm going to tell it what to look at. Alright, so now we've got all these strings that appear in the hex. It's a lot to go through and just scroll, scroll, scroll. So, in order to make it a little easier, I'm going to add another flag, which says, I want my string to be at least six, the number of six characters long. Now I've got a smaller number to look through, and I still don't have anything useful to work with. These first two lines, I've seen them in other JPEGs. Um, not exactly sure how they get put in there, but I think it has something to do with the encoding, but it, doesn't, it certainly doesn't give us anything that looks like hidden. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, binwalk. That's a tool that can do a lot of tests on a file and see if there's any hidden data in there. So I'm going to apply binwalk to cryptos. And all it sees is the JPEG. So I've got another tool called foremost. Which can also do a lot of discovery and now when I ran that you see I get a new folder here called output. I'm going to go into output and look at the audit and it shows me I can only see one file. It was a JPEG so it's unlikely we got anything useful here but we'll open it up and take a look. Okay, I'll do this. Go in here. Here's my file and I see the same picture but what I note is the file size is smaller. You remember it used to be 32.5k now it's 32.3k and that part of that is because we've taken some of the less significant bits that aren't really important for displaying the picture 
and embedded the text information. So when we deleted all those, we actually wound up shrinking the size of the file. So that didn't help us. What are we going to do next? We're going to use another tool called Stego Veritas. All right, so this runs for maybe 30 seconds on this particular file. So I'll clip to the conclusion of that run. Okay, so we identified, yes, it's a JPEG, but we also see that there's compressed data in here. That's where it gives us a clue that there's something hidden inside the file beyond just the JPEG because if we run it on just the regular picture file, we could only get the JPEG output. So now we look at the results folder that was created and it applies a ton of filters to the picture. So we can try to do some um, visualization st steganography. So sometimes the pixels are altered and that can hide a message. But in this case, we have keepers that we will look at, which gives us two files. This is the picture again. It applied a random string of characters to it. And then this, we think it's an archive, but we can't get into it. And the reason for that, of course, is that we put a password on it. So the next thing to do is we are going to use Steg Hide. There may be some other way we would have gotten the password for the file. Um, there's a myriad of ways that could happen, another series of clues, whatever that is. Um, but in this case, we're going to say we've gotten the passcode. Alternatively, we could go about trying to crack it with the dictionary. Um, I'll show you how this command worked and how you could go about using the dictionary. So, coming over here, we've got steg hide, and we're going to say, give me some info about this file. And then it's going to ask me, do you want to get information about embedded data? And then it's going to ask me for a passphrase, and I said, I don't have one. Notice I didn't get any data, but I also had to answer two questions. Now, if I say dash P and I provide a password, let's just pick one, A, okay? Still not the right password, but it allows us to avoid those two questions. Now, I go through and I say hidden, because we know that's the actual password, and maybe we would have gotten that from dictionary or whatever whatever style we want to say we got it from but in any case we've now been notified that there's a file to extract so the, do that again with steg hide and the instructions are again at the bottom of the help and i'll say okay there's the source file in the past phrase. I'm going to overwrite because we've already got it in the directory. But this way I can show you I got the exact same output as what I put in. So in this video we've looked at how to embed information in a picture that we couldn't otherwise see with the naked eye. We've looked at tools that would help us to determine that there's something there and to extract that data. And then we've looked at exactly how to get that out with the tool appropriate to the task. There's a lot more tools out there. I'm going to leave some information in the description with some links to some of the guides that I found online that were very helpful to me in putting together this video. And uh, again, can't speak to the fitness of the applications. I just know that I'm using them here in my Linux virtual machine and that they are having the right results. A lot of them have widespread usage and are often open source, but again, I'll let you do that determination. Finally, if you liked the video, please subscribe, hit the bell. I'm gonna to continue to put out videos, uh, many of them in the early stages, of course, relative to Satoshi's treasure. If you'd like, you can check out my website where I continue to put uh, not only the same kind of links that we have in the description for this video, but any public keys that are out there that everybody already has um, widely known. I will also be posting those so that um, it's easier to centralize that information. If you have any videos you want to see me do in the future, please drop me something in the comments below. Also, if you've got any other tools or methods that you think are rele relevant to this process, please also provide comments about that. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching.